everyone! I am a published writer, but this is the first year I'll be going to a conference and showing a portfolio of my illustrations. One of the requirements for the portfolios in this conference are that they be no larger than 11 by 14 because so many illustrators are going to be showing their work. I already had some 11 by 14 portfolios that I store some of my paintings and pictures in, but they were all uh, portrait orientation vertically and I really wanted to have something that was landscape this time because most of my illustrations I'll be showing are landscape. The other thing is the portfolios I had before don't really lie flat and I wanted something that would just flip open and stay open for the person a little bit better. So even though this is more than I would normally pay on a portfolio, I purchased something that I saw other people recommending and this is definitely a landscape one, but when you open it up, it definitely lies flat. So what it has is it has uh, piano hinges, is what they call them, on both sides, and then screws that you unscrew here, and this comes with some clear sheets that I can insert my copies into, I'll unscrew them and then put those in. This, as I said, maybe I'm dwelling on a little too much, is more than I would normally spend on one, but um, I was a little disappointed because this kind of had some smudge marks on it. Um, when I go to the conference, I'm going to check in again and say and see what I saw that was good. I don't know if everybody has one like this. But there were some questions I had that I wasn't quite sure how to handle. And so I'm just going to plow on through, do it my way, and then I'll get back at the end of the video telling you what other people did. The portfolio I'm going to be putting these into is 11 by 14 per the requirement of the conference. And you might be noticing that this is off a little bit because I actually had my printer print these on legal size paper, 11 by 17, and what I'm going to be doing is trimming these down to fit into the, in, into the uh, sleeves. So with something like this, it's just going to be straight, you know, using a paper cutter on either side to make this, move this down to an 11 by 14. For a picture like this, I can kind of play around with how I want it to fit into the sleeve depending where it ends up. Probably the suggestion you'll hear most often about putting together a portfolio is to keep your style similar within a portfolio. So theoretically I should have one portfolio for my um, looser, funner style, whimsical style, and my stuff that's more realistic. That's not probably going to happen this time just because I used to paint more like this. This is my newer style so I want to put this probably at the beginning, but I'm also working on some books on my own that are more the realistic. So I'm going to ignore that suggestion, but it is out there. Another question I had about putting together a physical portfolio was basically how to label it. And what I decided to do was, if it's a book I'm working on, so in the case of this story, the book is called Blue, but this was just, this vampire boy down here was just something that I did actually for Inktober. And I ended, I usually color, end up coloring my Inktober ones just because it's fun. But because Blue is a book, I put her in italics, and Vampire Boy, just because it's a single illustration, I just put it in, um, quotation marks. Another thing you might notice in these illustrations is that they're both of children. The conference I'm going is for the Society of Children Books Writers and Illustrators and sometimes I've heard that people forget to put children in. Another suggestion is to include some black and white illustrations 
because editors and art directors and agents sometimes are looking for illustrators who can do novels with um, illustrations now and then throughout. There's only going to be one in my portfolio because even though I do Inktober every year, this happens to be one of the few that I didn't colorize. Another suggestion is sewing sequence. So this book is a book I'm working on that I haven't finished yet, but I had two pieces of art done and it shows that I can do my character Ginger Snap somewhat um, consistently. I was spending a lot of time on the computer trying to figure out how to arrange the pictures so that I could figure out which ones to print out and I finally decided just to have my printer print out a bunch of them. Um, I'm using cardstock so it's kind of um, it's kind of more sturdy and it's not going to start warping or rippling or anything but it wasn't until I actually had these printed out that I kind of thought that I wouldn't necessarily want these two pictures together just because they're both fairies but they're kind of pinky. So even though on the computer I might have thought that was a good idea, now that I see them in person I'm thinking that I'll either not put one of these fairies in or I'll break them up a little bit more. So I'm going to go ahead and just shuffle through all these and organize them. Um, and make sure I get a few sequences together. So one more thing I was going to just show before I go ahead and start uh, trimming down my sheets and organizing how I have everything is that in a case like this there's going to be a room full of portfolios so you want to make sure that they're labeled. Could not figure out how they would want that done so I basically just took a bunch of um, pictures this is usually this this little kitty icon which was the first cat I ever had for 15 years um, but this is my childhood kitty and I tend to use him as my icon and so I just put my address and my Gmail account if anyone wanted to email me. It's a day later and I've gone over what I want to put into my portfolio. I will be including these two illustrations, even though they don't quite fit thematically with the rest of it, it seems to be kind of a fantasy, whimsical approach, except for these two. I painted myself into a corner though, and that brings up my biggest tip for putting together a physical portfolio, which is allow yourself enough time. I went ahead about a month ago and ordered postcards that I'm going to have next to my portfolio that have this image. So I kind of have to include it. If I don't, I think it's such a different image from the others they won't remember. So if I'd given myself enough time, I could have had my portfolio done and then printed different postcards. I really like the postcards but they took a while to get here, so I just don't have time. Another thing about me not allowing myself enough time is that when it came to figuring out what I wanted to put in, I realized these images are very gray compared to my original art. Um, I, don't know if, I don't know if that comes through or not, but this is much brighter. This is a copy, this is a print because it's printed on and this is just like a, a Xerox, dare I say the word. Um, so for example, I wanted to put this piece in and it's just really gray looking. It looks nothing, the color's nothing like what I usually have. Another time or the next time I do this, I might actually try to get photographs made instead of copies.
This conference offers another couple of opportunities to anyone showing their portfolio. One thing that um, people can do is they can attach a, an envelope on the back and have index cards with their names on them and prompts so that if there's any question like how can I um, improve my illustrations or something along that line, you can have the index cards here and people can fill them out and give you suggestions and tuck them into the envelope and back. I'm not doing that. Another opportunity which is I wish I could but I just don't have one is you can attach one book dummy, one mock-up for a book um, and they suggest by ribbon and I'm assuming that maybe you just punch a hole through your, your uh, dummy and then tie it on to here or something. But again, when I come back from the conference, I will let you know what I saw. I was looking at one of the first portfolios I came to, and I suddenly smelled gouache. And I realized that what I was looking at was original art. I immediately stopped looking through the portfolio because it's flexible pages, and I was afraid that if I moved the pages that I would knock off some of the gouache, because it is fragile. I saw a lot of people walking around with glasses of wine and drinks, and plates of crackers and cheese, and they were putting them down right next to it, and I don't think it happened to this beautiful, beautiful portfolio, but it could have, someone could have knocked over a drink by mistake and that would have just been heartbreaking. Um, many of the people there have their own printers, you know, BK or whatever, and they were able to control the color and how things looked and probably made mul multiple prints before they were happy, but they also could use different papers. They, was, they were really lovely. One person even printed their illustrations onto watercolor paper. At the beginning of this video, I was saying how I went out and bought a very expensive um, screw post professional portfolio, and I'm glad I have it. I know that one person in particular was having a long chat with an art director, and they just had the standard portfolio there that you get it at, you know, Blick, Dick Blick, or at Jerry's Art or Ram, just an inexpensive one. It wasn't affecting how the art directors or the agents or the editors were looking at this. So this was my first portfolio showing and I imagined that you'd bring your portfolio and someone would take it and they'd go put it on the table. I was at the end of the herd. I was, um, I think there were like five people in line after me. We were kind of stuck in a backwater where there was this large room and there were tables in the center those were the tables you wanted to be at. There was a lot of area to walk around. People could look at on both sides. The less great area was along the outside of the room um, where people could still look, but it wasn't, it wasn't getting as much traffic. And the area you really didn't want to be in was where I was. It was just kind of crowded and you'd go in and then you'd have to kind of wait for people to move out. Get there early I grab a good spot. The one bright side is that the lighting was actually better where we were, the color of the light was brighter and the portfolios that were in the center of the room were under the muted, moody, warm light. So thank you for watching. I hope some of these suggestions are helpful to you. Um, if you are interested in putting together some uh, promotional materials, that will be in the next video.